It's showtime. Seriously, I don't know how the hell Joker fights with these gloves, let alone holds a gun. These things are a hazard. Welcome back, awesome people, to Cocktails and Consoles. It's Melissa, and if the uh, attire didn't give it away, we are doing not one, but two videos for what has become one of my most cherished games, wasn't expecting it to, Persona 5. If you are fellow fans of Persona 5, let me know who your favorite character is down below and uh, who exactly you picked for your waifu. I'm kind of curious. Now, in our live stream, we actually did pick Makoto, who I kind of like, but kind of hoping in the new version that's coming out, maybe we can pick Yusuke. I don't care what you say, Yusuke is a great character. I know he's supposed to be weird, but I love him. Now, I'm sure it comes to no surprise to any of you guys, there is a ton of food and beverages that is mentioned in Persona 5, but of course, we had to make Coffee Dad proud, and by Coffee Dad, I mean Sojuro, by making coffee. I was actually pleasantly surprised to see how many really interesting tips and tricks that this game gave you, not only on how to make good coffee, but also how to make good curry. And we're making that next. If you like for that one to also be in your subscription playlist, you're gonna hit the subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate it. First, I'm gonna take you through the very, very basics when it comes to coffee and show you a couple tips and tricks that not even Coffee Dad knew on how to take your coffee from here to. Ah! Ooh, that's gonna be fun to edit later. So, to get us started, yeah, these have gotta come off. Totally understanding why Joker is constantly adjusting his gloves through the entire game. So now every coffee fanatic will tell you the best coffee has to be ground as close to percolating as possible. Now is this all hype? No, it's actually very true. For those of you guys who are cooking fans, you also notice this with spices. Once those spices are ground, they start to oxidize and spoil really fast. It has a lot to do with surface area and rate of oxidation. We're not going to go into that. We're basically just going to say, if you want the best bang for your buck in a cup of coffee, ground this as close to making it as possible. Now, does that mean that you have to go out and buy one of those ungodly expensive coffee grinders? Or be sorely disappointed with one that calls itself a coffee grinder and really does not make the grade? Actually, no. If you're willing to spend a little bit of time by hand, you can get your hands on one of these where you can grind your own. I think this was about $25. I got it off of Amazon. I'll link it down below if you guys are interested in it. Not sponsored, just so you know. So we're going to start off with just some regular coffee beans that I happen to pick up from Starbucks. Again, not sponsored. If anything, they're sponsored by me because I give them a lot of my money. And I really shouldn't because coffee made at home tastes so much better. We're gonna take our coffee beans and pour it on in. Now this particular coffee grinder is what's known as a ceramic coffee grinder. Ceramic coffee grinders tend to make a more even grind versus spice grinders, which is gonna give you a grind that's all over the place. You're not the shot, shut up! I swear to God, she's a little diva. And right away. It's a little noisy, it's a little time consuming. But again, it saves you about 100 to 200 bucks on buying one of those really expensive automatic ceramic grinders. So now that we have our grounds, we're gonna be adding this to one of my most favorite methods for making coffee. Again, it's not gonna be fast, but it's gonna be damn good. So we're gonna take our grounds and we're gonna add about a good tablespoon to what's known as a French press. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be showing up on the camera, but the grounds actually look very nice and uniform. It smells really good in here. To that, we're gonna add some extremely hot but not boiling water. That's gonna give us the best extraction without over extracting the beans. About six ounces to a good tablespoon of coffee. So what is this actually doing? It's a good question. What this is doing, it's basically 
emulsifying the coffee would probably be the best turn of phrase. So within coffee beans, there is a natural oil that occurs and oil and water are enemies. However, there's a couple ways that you can solve for that problem. One, you can introduce something that can bind it like egg yolks, which don't worry, is not the trick I'm gonna be showing you. Or two, you can shove them through very, very fine holes and it will force them together whether they goddamn like it or not. And now for the fun part. Let's talk about the tips and tricks to turning this into an amazing cup of coffee that even Coffee Dad would be proud of. First trick, little pinch of salt. Something in the magic of salt, I really wish I knew what it was. It, it doesn't make your coffee salty. Let me dispel that myth right away. Actually what it does, it helps to make it a little less bitter. It helps to activate the sensors on your tongue to give you more of the taste of the good rich coffee and cut down on a bit of the bitterness. So to our coffee, we're gonna add just a little pinch of salt. We're gonna add a little bit of cocktail magic to this. Again, totally not necessary, only if you feel like doing this. And please be careful, because we're playing with fire. So for those of you guys who've ever been to a nice upscale bar, sometimes you see that they like to add smoke to their cocktails, but they're doing it wrong. Most of the times when they introduce smoke to a cocktail, they don't rim the glass with anything. So that smoke doesn't have anything to cling to. And once you pour in the drink, you'll get a little whiff of it and then it just goes away. There's nothing in there to keep the smoke around. Except for two things. One, if you add sugar, like we did in this other cocktail bin, for those of you whiskey fans out there, link is down below. Or two, if you introduce fat. Now, for some of you guys who are very health conscious, I'm sure you've seen all the wonderful things about bulletproof coffee, which is basically adding high quality butter to coffee. I don't know the veridity, no, veracity, validity to any of those claims and I'm not gonna profess to know, but there's a way that we can use this to our advantage. So we're gonna take our cup, we're gonna take a little bit of butter, and we're going to just lightly rim the inside of this cup. Not a whole lot, just a little bit to get the smoke to clean. Then grab yourself a nice mm, cinnamon stick. Be very careful. And we're gonna set this ablaze. This is gonna add a lovely little scent of cinnamon with a touch of smoke. You just wanna get it to where it's smoking, not exactly on fire. There we go. And then put it on something safe, take your cup, and set it over. Oh god, that already smells so good. Then we're going to take our cup. Don't worry if the smoke evaporates. Remember, there's fat in the butter that's going to help keep it along. And then, a money shot, beautiful cup of coffee. Now, if you want to make this a little bit alcoholic, coffee works great with a whole number of grain alcohols, including whiskey and even tequila. But for this, I want to keep it a little bit simple, and we're going to be using something called bourbon cream. Adds a little bit of richness, a little bit of sweetness, but it doesn't overtake the coffee. And there you have it, a gorgeous cup of coffee that even Sodro would like. Oh my God, it's so good. So it's rich, but not decadent. You don't taste the salt. All you really taste is the coffee with a little bit of smoke and a little bit of the bourbon cream. Coming up very, very soon, we are gonna be doing a Sojuro's curry that hopefully even Futaba would like. If you'd like to get that in your playlist, you wanna hit the subscribe button down below and I will see you, Phantom Thieves, in the next video. Cheers!